<laughs> what the fuck's that? Oh, you gonna take one of these? No. <laughs> oh, you gonna get one of these, okay? No, no, no. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mike Glover, Phil Kraft Survival. Out here with uh, DJ from GBRS. Um, man, I feel really insignificant out here with my little pea shooter. And then you pull out that big, um, looks like an elephant gun or a trunk of a gun. And I, I noticed that right out the gate, that gun, which you just shot for the first time ever, just now, uh, really flat. When you shot that gun and the front sight, because it is muzzle flipping slightly, can you notice a difference from it being adhered to the barrel versus reciprocating with the slide? Can you can you notice like I can get on target faster? Yeah, it, it feels natural when you drive it out. It drops right back. It turns zero super fast. It uh, it's really surprising how smooth it feels. Like you're expecting you're expecting more because it weighs a lot. Yeah, and it doesn't, man. It feels like it's on rails. Like for whatever reason, it um, the big thing for me with it becoming with it coming from Sig being suppressed or being a uh, being a uh, comped is the reliability that's the issue is i always do it myself i time it wrong or it won't chew 115 grain yeah. i have to shoot this ammo because like to me the the comfortability and the reliability of that pistol if i pull that thing out and i have to engage an actual person with it i want it as an extension of my body and this thing gives me every possible advantage my return is zero it matters yeah it does so yeah like i don't want to worry about i misplaced my top my comp or i I mistimed it, I'm running the wrong ammo, and now I've got light strikes. Now I'm just running through tap rack bang drills, and mm -hmm. that's not what I need to be focusing on. Yeah, my, my rule of thumb is on a, especially a tactical gun or a gun that's used for everyday carry, um, if I, or home defense in this particular case with how big this gun is, if I pick up a gun and it malfunctions once, I've lost faith, and I'm trying to figure out and reproduce that, and if I get it reproduced some way, I'm like, dude, I don't want, I, I'm not going to trust this gun with my life. And that's, that's a discrepancy that you find in a lot of aftermarket guns. Here's what I, I won't say, because we haven't identified it. We don't know if it's reliable yet, right? Because we haven't got a lot of rounds in it. When I used to watch you guys run around with your, uh, was it the Mark 23? With a suppressor down to your ankle and those big <laughs> ass holes. <laughs> dude, I was like, what? And the only thing they were good at for, um, barely, was shooting out lights right before it hit. Um, but you guys have been running SIGs for a long time. Are you confident in SIGs' ability and everything you've seen from service to civilian space that it is a reliable package, a reliable gun? I bet my life on it. Really? For sure. That's it, I mean, yeah. Now, I mean, more than ever now. Yeah. Now that I can choose whatever I want to, I can shoot whatever I want to, that 320 platform, because I'll be honest, I wasn't a fan of that 226. Yeah. Like, a double action. Double action, pull, single like action? Just, yeah, yeah. Like, that first one was really to cock the gun. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's a long trigger pull to manage, especially when you're first learning, you know, pistol's not really your primary, it's your secondary. Yeah. And now with this 320, they've mended both platforms together. Yeah. Like striker fire, and dude, I've never been happier shooting that gun. Uh, here, here's what I wanna do for you guys uh, on this piece of content. We do, we just did a 365XL comp assessment where we evaluated a couple of things. One of those was grip, um, I didn't tell you about this, but th this has weighted uh, grip modules, which means that it's counterweighted against the the uh, the action and the slide. One of the reasons that's a benefit is if you have a lightweight bottom end, like a polymer frame and a Glock, for example, what you'll see is the gun kind of doing this, and it feels it doesn't doesn't feel balanced. That feels like a race gun because everything's perfectly balanced. Like you have like uh, the, the amount of weight in the bottom is the same amount of weight in top, and that matters. Does that matter in self-defense? The answer would be yes if it correlates to competition. If you're winning in comp uh, or competition, you could be winning in self-defense. Now here's what I won't advocate for, that this gun is a good carry gun, unless you're like me and DJ size. I mean, you're, unless you're above six foot tall um, and you're a big ass dude, so Cole would be out. You know, Cole's carrying like a Derringer right now for concealed carry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I had to put that out there. No, I'm sorry. Um, but I want to evaluate the gun with DJ like he did me uh, in Ready Gunner, where we I kind of walk him through a couple of drills to do some evaluation that you could see on the camera. One of those is going to be what does the muzzle flip look like? Uh, we were able to do some janky ass graphics where we like put a line and then another line, mm -hmm. and we're like. Technically, it's like that's yeah, that's not science, uh, but it's close enough for TV. 
Um, we'll also kind of look at split times. We won't have to measure split times here, but I'd like to see in a five round shot group, how many rounds you can get in the same uh, area, meaning you're not stitching the target and how quick that gun is dropping into position and then how that trigger reset feels. Because you do have nickel uh, bullion. <laughs> it's bullion, right? Mm -hmm. Nickel bullion, we're just gonna go with bullion. <clears throat> um, nickel boron for the, the coating it's super sexy, but it's also uh, uh, slicker that from the engineer's perspective. It's got a more, what's the word, Rob? Viscosity? V viscosity? It's lubed up better. So I want to see how that translates in his hands. I can't believe I said those two things together in <laughs> such a short period of time. Be all right. We should have went on a commercial break and came back to that. That's going to get weird. Yeah, it's going to get weird. Um, so yeah, here we go. And it's my opportunity to kind of put a little pressure on DJ and... Uh, Make him suck a little bit, but he's he's just not going to. It's the gun. The yeah. gun's so good. This gun's so good. So let's do that. What do you think this is? This is uh, whatever. Five meters or five yards. We did something the other day where I basically let the gun balance in my hand. I yeah. didn't do anything with the grip. Yeah. And just try to pull it straight to the rear to see how high it would climb. Let's do that. Yeah, with so, a weak grip. So yeah. weak grip. I mean, like basically just balance it in my hands. Yeah. Seeing the action. Just to see how much it drops. Okay. See how much it rises. All right. So that's like no no grip on the gun. But yeah. So no grip. So grip doesn't matter for accuracy, but the follow-up shots it matters. Yeah. So check out the target, uh, John, on that one. Like if you were there and you were attacking me right now, when I pulled that gun out, I wouldn't be a 60/40 or an 80/20. Yeah. It'd be 100% because you're fucking charging. Ah. Uh, that's really what it is. Trying to make it a vice. Yeah. I like that. Instinctive stuff. Let's try this. Let's try. Uh, let's try a five-shot string off the draw, and. And just a, like a 0 0.20 split, like a one, two, three, four, five, like pop, 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 pop. So we'll start off slow, not slow. Just we'll start boom, off. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, one, shooter two, three, four, rises. five, and then we'll increase the speed. Okay. All right, shooter ready? Yep. Yeah. Stand by. Up. Yeah. He missed five times, but we won't show the target. It's yeah. just, it's not about that. You know, we're not focused yeah. on accuracy. Yeah, we're not trying to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, about a 0 0.2220 split. And let's and see if you could ramp it up and see where we fall off. Okay. Shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. Up. Ooh. 0.18 split. I got a calibrated ear eardrum. Partially deaf, so I hear the vibration. And then it registers my watch, my Apple watch. Big out big shout out to Apple for hooking that up. <laughs> um these are your new, these are your new uh, pouch carriers, huh? You guys have those out yet? Nope, not yet. Come on, man. Yeah, we're gonna drop here soon. Come on, you got me rocking like uh, uh, Condor pouches from like the PX. <laughs> Dude, I used to have those things. <laughs> hey, man. Cole, How man, long you Cole said he's gonna hook it up. You've had that thing for what, 15 years? 15 years. Dude, running strong. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah, it's like a WWF belt yeah. from that I had as a kid. I just turned it around, modified mm -hmm. it. No big deal. So here, here's here's the last thing I want to do. Um, we don't have a lot of time on the videos. My camera guys are all freaking out right now. Um, Austin's eating Chick-fil-A behind the truck right now. Um, we have never done this, and I'm going to do it cold. <clears throat> I want you to shoot that gun retracted because there is a debate online that a ported or compensated gun has a lot of muzzle break up, which it does, of course, but then that's problematic in a self-defense situation. I even saw an article, not an article, but a guy that I respect in the industry who's, who's asking the question, in retraction, um, is that a problem? My mindset is it's not, because the last thing I care about is catching brass in the face or gas in the face when I'm point shooting a dude in his chest in defense of my life. What's your take on that? One of the things we just talked about was driving the vehicle. We used to stick it underneath our leg back in the day so if you were in the passenger seat and i see a thread on your side to pull this out and backplate yeah we don't have time to roll it over i'm basically pinning you the way your mom used to but the same thing if we get tied up here and i draw from here and i shoot i'm sending it yeah i'm not worried about it at all yeah i've taken um on an op once in iraq chris my buddy i uh i shot a dude behind a door and after his, my barrel was touching his hand and his chest and as he was falling towards me my buddy chris was standing in the doorway his gun dropped right in front of my face. And he was like, and I was just like, just breathe and don't move. Breathe and don't move. Mm -hmm. um, 
but that was the last of my worries, yeah. right? So let's get up on target and we'll do this. I don't know how you um, in particular uh, do this action. So I'll, what I'll just say is, um, um, do you do you get close to it? Do you do like yeah, an arm? Like you imagine if we were just fighting inside of a telephone booth and I had to pull garment yeah. and it basically came to there. That's yeah. all it is. Okay. I like the index off my ribs, off something. Yeah. But you can do the same thing. If I had to roll to this side, it's all coming on my center line. Nothing's going in front of this thing. And I really just keep mindful of this. If I have to hit a touch point, this is where it is. Nothing drops below my sternum because yeah. that's where this pistol is. I'm not arcing it up, not really dropping it down in my center line because now where I look, I know I can keep my windage. Dude, that, that could have been a separate knowledge transfer video, man. You yeah. integrate, that's too much. We got This is a three part series yeah. now. You guys gotta, and and I find it funny that you you uh, you plant off your rib. Is that you you do that? I yeah. plant off my love handle because it's just I could just drop my arm like this and it's a stable shooting platform. Mm -hmm. But why do you do that? So training with Tom Kaya, the Seattle Tactical guys, Kyle before, like a bunch of the combative stuff. Yeah. If we start to extend it out, we start to lose it. Uh, the farther I can bring it in, I'm gonna make you come into my world. I'm gonna bring you into this nightmare. Got it. And now if you want the gun, you really got to come into my space to get it. Got Twice it. Twice if I extend it, now you pull me. Got now it. we're trying to fight for this. You're shit. reducing the signature in yep. internal. Basically clear garment and I come right to here. Oh. So even if you fall on top of me, I'm clearing my hands. Thunk, thunk, thunk. What's interesting is like even the way you're doing that, which I mean, you're trained in doing this. You might have done it in real world. When you take your gun and I notice you're tilting the gun this way. So the port is that way anyway. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to do it with blades then I was going to rock on this side for like uh, some little bit of combative type stuff we used to do. If I had a blade in my, my other strong side, we'd roll gun to this side back and forth yeah and guys this is not coming from like a uh, mechanic in the utah national guard i mean close i mean yeah close same thing damn neck it's no I mean, same thing all right so let's do that and then i want to get your impressions off of the gas that's coming off the gun you know if it chops, chops your beard off we'll know that but yeah. i just want to see what your impressions are and the feeling of afterwards done yeah. all right so we'll get up Shooter ready, stand by. Threat. Ooh, that's the one to use. All right. Six rounds. All right. So let's talk about your uh, let's talk about your initial impressions. Like, what did that feel like? Did you notice any gas coming off? No. None at all. No. I mean, it feels it feels steady. It feels like it's more manageable with one hand. Like that that seems to be the great equalizer. I see a bunch of guys at 25 meters take a couple shots, one-handed shot. I think about the reality of why I'd have to do that. Yeah. In a combative situation, like if you were to punch me in the face and we start fishing for pistols, yeah. it's only going to be one hand because you're so fucking big. I've got to get a hold of you. Yeah. And I've got to be able to manage it with one hand. So uh, I want every advantage possible. See, that's that's one thing, like two two things um, that a lot of people don't hone in in this tactical advantage of compensated guns. One is not everybody is built like DJ. Like, I mean, DJ is massive. Cole's smaller in form factor, still violent and an animal. But you're talking like a Connie Corso and a Beagle? I don't <laughs> Cole's a 210-pound grown ass man. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't he didn't hear that one. Yeah, well, yeah. That, yeah. So you, you take a guy like DJ who's built like DJ, the if a if a female picks up a gun, how are they gonna be able to handle it? And in the tactical advantage, yes, two hands, perfect scenario, good to go. But how often are you doing things where you're like, you might be on the phone, you might be holding your child, you might be doing whatever, trying to blade your body and you need one hand, that's important. So, like, training with Sayok and Tom Kyer and those guys, they did a bunch of stuff for new dads. Like, you're walking around, you got a brand new baby and a baby, but, so we do it with dummy babies, but to be able to block the kid's head and draw and take a shot. Yeah. If you never train that, you won't elevate on the day of. Yeah. You won't even think about blocking the kid's ears. Yeah. You won't think about any of that kind of stuff. Or if you and me, we start fishing for pistols, I've gotta be able to maintain you John's charging me and I have to stop and shoot him at 15 feet. Yeah. One handed. I'm not gonna be able to get two hands on it. And if I've never trained it, I'm just gonna start throwing rounds. Yeah. So it's like, I want every, every possible advantage. Give me a ported gun. Yeah, you guys start for using sure. that for me as a company thing, tactical advantage. Yeah. Cause I use knowledge for transfer every time. And I give you credit sometimes. Good. Sometimes I tag you every once in a while. Um, guys, um, so I I've never shot this gun. I'm getting jealous just watching him shoot this gun. I want to shoot it and kind of do a review. I'm going to do that um, and work through that in a, in a separate series. You might see it before or after or whenever. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but the guy holding the camera is a South Korean Navy SEAL named John. Super badass. He hates when I do that, but I just like to put that out there because it's like, 
I mean, he's a fucking Navy SEAL, man. That's badass. That's awesome. That's um, cool. he, we just talked about this morning over breakfast. You're like, mm-hmm. John Park. Yeah. Like, That's... Like he hit us up months yeah. ago, like we trying to set up train, trying to do content. Was he like a desperate fanboy, or was it? No, like cool? dude, like, like it was super cool. I hit up Cole, I was like, dude, we've got a <laughs> South Korean seal that wants to come hang out. We were trying to figure out the ITAR thing, and we walk out of here, and he's sitting in your living room. So, yeah, that's the smallest. No Korean shit. emojis, like hearts, <laughs> uh, like like kittens. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love it. No, man, fuck cool. Uh, awesome, man. Yeah, thanks for that, DJ. That was no, awesome, man. man. Appreciate, Appreciate it. you. GBRS, and where, where can guys find you guys at? Instagram, YouTube. GBRS All GBRS, right? Yep. All GBRS. Yeah. What does GBRS stand for? Global Battlefield Research Solutions. You just made that up just now. <laughs> just now. You got a t-shirt and everything. <laughs> guys, look at the links below. Uh, all the links are available. Follow these guys' uh, channel on YouTube, um, Instagram, and then check out the store. A lot of their kit, I mean, I have their belt underneath this belt. I don't like to show it because I don't like to show off, but it is one of the greatest belts uh, that's out in the market. I talked about it in our gear review on Mike Glover Actual. But yeah, man, I appreciate you guys coming out. We'll do more. Uh, Until next time. Peace out, guys.